Welcome to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark, the Sim Hangar for all things flight sim related. Asobo and Microsoft on the 28th of January held another one of their Q&A sessions. If you've watched that, well you're all caught up. If not, then here are the highlights as applicable to VR. But first, two quick non-VR items. The first is the Fly-By-Wire, A320 mod. From what they were saying, it looks like there's an option to have this available via the Flight Sim Marketplace. And secondly, and a big one for me, is the replay feature, sadly missing from the sim at this time. Asobo confirmed that they're working on this and have a trial version. So it will be coming to the sim, but for both of these, no dates yet. Okay, on to VR. Answering the questions as normal was Jorg from Microsoft and Sebastian and Marcel from Asobo. And it was good to hear that both Jorg and Michel are keen VR flight enthusiasts. We're all aware that a fair proportion of the development and changes made to Microsoft Flight Simulator is based on the community snapshot or feedback. So it was good to know they've created a separate feedback schedule just for VR. It's still early days, but this is the list as presented on the 28th of January. It'll be no shock to anyone, as is the case with all VR, we're looking for improved performance and graphics. The Sobo are looking to improve the performance of the sim as a whole, and this obviously will have a direct impact on VR performance as well. I know I'm looking forward to the incorporation of the DX12 API mid-year. They didn't highlight any specific areas, but Sebastian did give an example of the optimization of trees and he's hoping to improve that times four. This bodes well for all of us. And whether VR or not, I think we're all looking for better core utilization. York did highlight that at this time, this list is not comprehensive. It's still very early days for VR in Microsoft Flight Simulator. But we can see from the above, they've given the top three items priority one, then priority two items, and priority three. This of course could change. VR controller support is missing and this is being looked at. Again no time frame indicated but we'll revisit controllers a little bit later on. Good news for VR enthusiasts of course will be the scaling slider and setting bars as well as a brightness slider. If you feel quite strongly about a particular aspect of VR make sure your voice is heard. Go on the forums and vote. The more votes a particular topic gets, the more attention a Sobo will give it. I see number 8 on the list is an external chart viewer on a tablet. For me, I want an internal chart viewer so I can view the charts and other documentation whilst flying in VR. I don't want to keep popping in and out of the headset. Breaks the immersion. There was of course the question with regards to support for other headsets, such as the Pimax etc. Let's hear what Marcel and York had to say on this point. Oh, uh, the additional headset like uh, Primax, um, we are using OpenXR. So this has been a choice to, uh, to have a, a wide range of devices been, been working from day one. But as a consequence, there is a re headset that does not support VR on all the functionalities of, 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 VR, of, of OpenXR right now. Uh, it's, a, it's a problem for us. So uh, we, could, we could say that we are in contact with just about all uh, manufacturers of VR. So mm -hmm. it, this is it's working through it. Everybody wants it to happen. It's just a question of, are they going to come over to OpenXR, uh, uh, OpenVR or whatnot? So it's, but it's in progress. That's quite interesting. And it would appear that if you want to use VR in Microsoft Flight Simulator, you've got to incorporate OpenXR. That's the foundation that VR is built on in the sim. We're aware this doesn't have a direct impact on Oculus users at this time and Steam users. So it's more of an issue for those people using only proprietary software such as Pimax. We're going to have to watch this space for future updates and developments. However, I think the positive from this is that OpenXR is designed for multi-platform and cross-platform use. So for third-party manufacturers to build in OpenXR compatibility should not be too much of a challenge. Turning back to the VR controllers and the support thereof quickly. As mentioned earlier, they're a bit non-committal in terms of time frame. Sorry, I digress for a minute. Look at the beauty of that moon. It's a blood moon. But maybe it's just me, but I think there was a little bit of an awkward moment for Jorg when Marcel was talking about the controllers. 
Did he inadvertently let the cat out the bag on something he shouldn't? Have a listen to this. On an RN pipe, um, everything's to help the uh, user to have a better interaction um, with the cockpit. Uh, th this will also be bring with the, uh, we are talking about the, uh, the Xbox um, port. Uh, so with the Xbox port, we had the chance to, uh, to rethink the way we're going to interact with the cockpit, so th these are some some side effects, and the good side effects will be also easier using some some VR devices to uh, to interact with the with the controls. I'm not going to speculate, but I'll leave that to your own judgment. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks very much for joining me today. I hope you found this useful and informative. Take care, stay safe, everybody. See you again soon, and bye for now.